the brief abbreviation that most people have heard of is AVM, which really just stands for anovascular malformation, which in layman's terms is just a bad or abnormal connection of blood vessels. But mine happened to be in my brain. And so when I was five, it really swelled up. And my dad actually said that it swelled so bad I looked like ET. It's funny to laugh at, but like a five-year-old's not supposed to look like ET. And like at first, I was flown to doctors in DC, Baltimore, and at the time, the only specialist was up in Boston, Massachusetts. So I flew up there five times and had five or six surgeries, five surgeries up there. And it's just then, even back after the fact, when I was 13 or 14, the specialist was also in Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. So I had four more surgeries there. So a total of nine surgeries, what they called embolizations, just for this particular AVM that kept reopening. That's finally now shut, knock on wood, shut for good. But that's, so it was with, all within six, seven months of, of each other, just because to keep the, the procedures done. And it was during the one in March of 99. Uh, the procedure's supposed to last two hours. Three hours go by, four hours go by. My mom's bawling her ass out in the waiting room and they have no idea what's going on. The doctor comes out, all right, it's, it's, it's stuff that happened, but it's, he's okay, it's fine. Maybe just a little bit longer. Five hours later, six hours later, I'm finally in the recovery room. When I was under and everything, um, I started the hemorrhage, which is just bleeding out and it's not supposed to happen. So if they didn't do what they did, this interview would not be happening right now. I wouldn't be here anymore. And in order to get to the stop, they just had to cut all the blood flow right off at once to where it was bleeding from. And doing so, it ruptured the optic nerve in my right eye because the, AV, the AVM was in the right side of my brain. So ever since March of 99, I have been blind in my right eye. No, it's not a glass, it's a real eye. Oh, it's, a, okay. it's not a fake eye, it's, it's the real eye. Like if you poke it, it hurts. It's the, <laughs> the pupil still dilates. Yeah. It's, it retains light and everything, but the optic nerve is fried. People that come up, like wave to me from the right side, hey, what's going on? And I just ignore them and, wow, all right. I said, hey, I was like, oh, my bad, couldn't, couldn't see you. And it's funny nowadays, because like my family always messes around and just jokes around with me for it. But like they say, we can do it, but if someone else does it, like they're getting their ass beat because it's just fucked up. But we can do it because we're family. It's just how, that's just how we are. My grandfather on my dad's side was in the army during World War II. My grandfather on my mom's side was in the Navy during World War II and he, they've all traveled overseas. And they, all my dads and my aunts, uncles, all served overseas. So it's pretty much all the men in the family have. And then I've, one of my cousins is a Marine. He was now a DC cop, but had military training. A few of my uncles were also Marine, military police. They've been through it all. My dad was actually going to be a Marine, but he wasn't eligible either. And my younger brother is currently in the Army and he's in the National Guard, but still at ROTC at College Park. And it's, I, it's a very military-based family, very policed based family. I have a bunch of cousins and uncles that are still Montgomery County, PG County cops, Charles County. There's a bunch of police that all come from military training. So it, it goes back a few few generations. Cool. I personally better. wanted to go to the Marines right out of high school. I wanted to become a Marine right as I turned 18, would have enlisted, been active duty. Because I'm probably closest with my grandfather than my brother. I mean, we're all close. We're all really close family. But I probably have the deepest connection with him just because we've bonded more, we've hung out more. And I've done a few papers on him and he's talking on the phone. He goes, yeah, I still talk to a few guys that are still alive. Like they're still really good buddies of mine. Um, he actually just went, he just lost one of his legs not long ago for amputation and all of his buddies that he still talks to, they all flew down to Florida and they all visited him. So like, I just, that's probably what sticks out to me the most is just talking to my grandfather about how he was overseas and met his best friends that he's never going to be able to forget and then I know they'll never be able to forget him and that's something I wish I could have had as well. I've always wanted to since I was younger just to go into the military. I just coming from the family of a bunch of people in the military whether it's Army, Navy, Coast Guard, whatever, National Guard, Marines, it just they all are doing it for the greater good, the protection of our safety for our country and I always admired that from them that they're risking their lives so people nowadays can just live their own lives here, whether that's loving this country or hating this country, they're protecting it regardless. And I just think there's no greater sacrifice than that.
they take the best of the best. Like there's very few people that want to go out and be a Marine because I mean, a few have buddies in the Navy and Coast Guard, but like the Marines, they have the highest after they return, the highest PTSD stats. Like they're most likely to have PTSD as compared to being enlisted in the Army or the Marines, or, or not the Marines, Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, Air Force. The Marines are most likely to have that many psychological disorders after they come back. And there's very few people that say, hey, I'm willing to risk that because I want to be a Marine. They're the few that are proud for a reason. And being denied the chance to be one of those, it, it hit hard, but like at the same time, I understood why. But having the dreams crushed, because I talked to numerous recruiters numerous times. I've talked to recruiters here at Towson when they came and visited Captain Humiston, had numerous conversations with him on the phone about it, met him in person a few times, and he goes, Ryan, I really wish you could, but at this time, you are ineligible. And again, it cuts deep, but my views for the Marines have never changed. I've always had the most respect for them. I've always admired them. And every time I see one, I hand, give them, shake their hand, thank you for your service. I've just always respected them before and after they've denied me. I come from a good old country family, and we've always loved America, always support the country, and always support the troops and everyone else that protects the country. It hurts not being able to be a part of that, but like, and no one's mad at me for not doing it because they all know I can't. Because they all know, they all know damn well if I could, I'd be out there. I'd be overseas, be in Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever. I'd be there in a heartbeat. And it's weird for people to think that, like, why would you want to do that? I, I, we were just always raised that way that we always, always respect one another, and especially those that help us be able to do what we do while they're risking their lives. It just, it just really, it means a lot to the, my family and all the families that are like mine, supporting the country, supporting the troops, and having that sense of pride and sense of being an American, and that means the most to us. I mean, in high school, I was Dean the Marine. It's just what I was. It's just everyone thought of me as that, and that's when it really hit me. It was like, I should do this. Like, I have to do this. So I talked to recruiters, and... They said physically fit, absolutely. Mentally fit, we'll do tests for that, but we can't get there without the vision test first. And I went and did the vision test. I was like, by the way, like I have contacts in one eye so I can see correctly. He goes, what do you mean one eye? Well, I'm blind in the other eye. He goes, oh, like, can it, can it, is it like corrected? Can it get up to 2040, the minimum standard? I was like, it, it can't. It is pitch black. And they go, oh well, we'll let you know. And at that point, I'm like, that's, that's a thanks for coming out, but we can't take you. I'd be, I've done through sports all through my life. I've just never stopped me before. Nothing's ever stopped me. And one sentence, we'll let you know. Heart dropped. And it, it, it cut deep. It really cut deep. And they never did let me know. Pretty much. I was waiting for emails and phone calls, and I never got it. Right after, right after the interview, I went home and told my parents how it went, talked to them, and they said, Rye, like, you knew it wasn't going to be that. You knew it. they weren't going to shake your hand saying congrats. I was like, yeah, I know, I know, but it just, it just sucked. And they're like, hey, you already half knew it was coming. You, you gave it your best shot. The worst they could say was no. It's the worst thing it's possible to say was no. Your life's not over. You're only 18 years old. You still have many, many years to live. And I was like, yeah, you're right. But it just sucks. And they're like, right. You're, like, you're going to get over it. You know the whole fame is here for you. We always are. And they're right. The family is always there for me. Like, my brother's living my dreams out for me. And that's, that's what really helped me through it. My younger brother actually going through it and doing what he's doing now. I mean, I'm always going to be proud of him regardless of what he does, whether he does continue it after college and continue. I am proud of him regardless. He's my younger brother. He's my baby brother. I'm always going to be proud of him. But it is another feeling like, oh, so yeah, my cousin, he's in the Army, or my, my uncle, he was in My brother is serving in the United States Army, and that means more to me than just having a friend or a cousin or whatever. It's, it's my younger brother. He's the closest one I have in my family. And he's living out both of our dreams, and I could never be more proud of him than I already am. It's my brother's, when he first went to basic, 
two summers ago, he uh, was out in basic training out in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. He just, they all got, it's not his actual official dog tag because he keeps those with him, but this is just one he got out there that has the Army values and the Warrior ethos, which stands, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. And then the Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Which, honest, they, those are probably the greatest values someone could have. It's just letting, putting everyone else before themselves and always helping out and always the sense of family and brotherhood and that closeness within a community. And I think that's the greatest thing anyone else can give to someone else. I'm never not happy. It, once they told me the no, like this, this case isn't for you, it, it sucked for a little while. I didn't know what I was gonna do after that. I was still undecided in college, but I was like, it's not the end of the world. Not everyone gets their dream job. It doesn't always happen that way. Everything always happens for a reason. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm very happy. I mean, I'm a film major, gonna be in sports broadcasting. I'm very happy. It's a story to tell people. It's, it's my story and it's, it's, it's cool. I don't mind it. it. It sucked at first, but life has its ups and downs. It is what it is, and I'm, I'm very happy. I'm okay with it. The day he gave it to me, I haven't taken it off. We both have a small one that has my initials and his initials on the front and back, just so I have, ever, the day since I got them, I haven't taken them off. It's been two years, and it's something I've always had with me. I mean, I wear some, a bunch of his army stuff all the time, just people ask me, hey, you're on the army? No, I'm not. My brother is, and they're like, oh, it's, thank you for his service, and that means a lot to me when other people thank me for my brother's service. And it's like, I appreciate it, I'm, I thank you. And it's just, he's proud to do what he does. And it's, that's probably the coolest part about it. It's just, when other people see it, they also respect it. And I think that's the greatest thing I can ask for, is people are respecting that. I can never put on a uniform and do what they do day in and day out, but I can act the same way as they do, have the respect for any and everyone, no matter how disrespectful or rude they may be. And just being that type of person, that always places, um, not even a mission, just always placing others' needs before theirs or others' wants before theirs, being that selfless and just never giving up, never stopping what they're doing, doing and instilling that within myself and my family, instilling that within us and my brothers and how I'm gonna instill that with my family whenever that day comes. So you're a Marine without the title, without the official title? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs>